What's going on guys, it's the Bulls and the Bears here with a weekly recap video with the Wheel Strategy. The week is in the books, or in the third week of April, one more week to go as far as I see it. And the account is, it's in a rough patch, not necessarily rough per se, but it's just, we're plateauing right now. We're, we're in a few positions that aren't really going anywhere. And as a result, this week in particular was underwhelming. I mean, I actually have zero dollars in realized gains this week. There was nothing new that I could add to my to my realized gain uh, table. No new profits. There were some moves that I did make regarding sold options on Bank of America and Chewy. Chewy had some cash secured puts sold for the week at a covered call. Bank of America had covered calls as well. So there were some trades there which I don't necessarily realize as gains or losses until the whole entire position is over with. It's not over with yet. I'm still holding these names. So right now it's just kind of behind the scenes, but there is some stuff to go over. It's just unfortunately kind of a, kind of a mild week, all things considered. So this shouldn't be a very long video. We'll go over every name and, and where we stand and what I did with them. The market as a whole kind of still remaining flat. Um, to going sideways, I mean, we, we had a small, a very small red week this week. Uh, but we're going to go over that as we always do. If you are new, welcome in. I trade the wheel strategy. It's an option selling strategy. And in my videos, I show you the trades I take, the profits I make, and how you can do it too. So if you are interested, feel free to stick around, maybe subscribe. And if you've been here before, you know what's coming next. We are going to go look at the S&P 500, go over the chart, how that looked for the week. And then, of course, wrap it up with the wheel strategy and my personal positions so as always we have the daily chart of the s p 500 here we go in my recent video my midweek update video i did introduce these new lines this new trend that i that i that i pointed out here it's an ascending triangle and in my video we were still inside of it this was on wednesday my wednesday midweek update video and uh, we were still inside this triangle and i was saying this pattern typically breaks to the downside so it's something to look for doesn't mean it will at the end of the day, we have support and resistance, and resistance can very easily uh, crack and we move up. But history shows that this pattern typically breaks down. So that was a bear signal, plus you have the supply zone up here, this red box, um, adding further resistance to the overall chart. And sure enough, we ended up outside of it to the downside. So far, nothing major has happened. We're going pretty much sideways since exiting that pattern but we did break below it if we go down to a five minute chart and really take a look at this you can see kind of what happened here so on thursday we gapped down below or, or outside of this pattern to the downside so we broke down basically uh pre-market we did have a strong rally during the day we were pushing up strong higher lows higher highs everything's great until we essentially, you know, it's never, it's never going to be perfect. Support and resistance are mostly in zones as opposed to a single line. So even though we didn't touch this line directly, I would still consider this as a test of this pattern of this overall ascending triangle here. So things are going great until we kind of tested that triangle. We broke it and then we tried to retest it and it failed. And if you were in the market at that time in the afternoon on Thursday, you noticed things really did tank um, in the last couple hours of the day. And I think that was a result of this break and retest. We broke through it. The bulls tried to reclaim it, tried to erase that bearish momentum, and then it failed. It retested it perfectly and then completely rolled over for some possible downside continuation. Now today, we didn't really go anywhere. We went sideways. We finished higher by $3, three points on the uh on the S on the spx the, on the actual index when you look at that spy we only moved up by 32 cents so a pretty sideways day and we held yesterday's low right here so right now we are finding some type of temporary support that's preventing the bears from getting that downside momentum but i do think it is important to note that we did break to the downside here so We'll see if this if this continues. The bulls are definitely going to need to try to get this thing back up towards, you know, 4150, 4160. 
But I don't know with the supply zone up here and the break below this trend, this pattern here, I feel like it's going in the bear's favor. I think they're going to win out here and we're probably going to come back down towards, I don't know, the low 4,000s. Well, right now we're at 4130. So I think at the very least, we got to test 4100 and see if we can break through that. See if the bulls can support that price. Otherwise, this could be a little bit of a rough month. I mean, they are saying, I'm seeing it everywhere, uh, the idea of um, sell in May and go away or something. So, like, I guess May is a time where investors typically sell out of positions and then kind of hold off and wait for a buying opportunity later in the summer or maybe going into the fall. I'm not sure. I kind of just heard that for the first time recently. So, uh, and May is right around the corner. So is that going to happen? It might. Will it be a coincidence? It could be. It just it just so happens that this bearish pattern is lining up with the month of May. Uh, but that's just another further catalyst, although not holding too much weight to it, as to why we might go lower. So not looking the greatest here. But who knows? Maybe we push back up. We don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But so far, the bears are definitely winning, in my opinion. But if I go to the weekly chart, you can see this current weekly candle, uh, not much movement from open to close, pretty much a doji candle. But considering all the weekly candles before it, pretty strong green candles for five straight weeks. And now we have a topping tail red doji looking thing. That could be a sign of a reversal of a top as well. So everything's pointing to the bears. But my point with this weekly candle is there wasn't much movement all said and done. So how did this affect the wheel strategy? What did my positions do? If the market went pretty sideways, what did my positions do? Well, let's get into that. Throw on the wheel graphic here. Again, nothing new on the profit side of things, but the banner down below does show, um, that did change, that does show my positions that I'm in and what's open right now. So we are gonna start with Bank of America. Here we go. So as a reminder, I got assigned on this name way back here at $30 per share. And then it had a bit of a spill and I wasn't able to do anything with it because it was too far underwater. And then over the past week, as soon as banks started reporting, uh, Bank of America did have a nice rally. And now we're back up to my assignment price, my break even. We're, we're, we're playing ball with Bank of America. So on that recent rally that we had, I was able to sell a covered call at the 31 strike right up here. Because it had earnings to go. I sold the call before it reported earnings. So IV was high. Premiums were nice. Uh, it was a week later too. So I had more than five days of time on it. So I got extra time value there. I sold the 31 strike and I got um, 30, 35, I think. 35 cents for it. Way up here. We ultimately rolled over. So reported earnings. It did pop right here. This is the earnings day. That nice, that nice gap up. But then it sold off that day a little bit and then it gapped down and just kind of moved lower the rest of the week. So as a result, the call that I sold at the 31 strike did decay. I did close it early for 90% of the premium. So I ended up locking up um, 32 cents worth of premium on that covered call that was for this week. So that lowered my break even down by 32 cents. Now my break even on 200 shares is at 29.44. And right now we're at 29.87. So I am in profit territory with this position. That's great. Uh, by about 40 cents on 200 shares. So if I closed it right now, um, I'd, I'd make about $80 profit on the whole entire position, which is great. You know, that's, that's, that's a gain. But I want more than that. I'm not trying to sell it right now. I'm trying to get out with covered calls as you're supposed to with the wheel. I do think the $30 range is appropriate for Bank of America. Now that earnings are coming out and we know that the banks are not as scary as what people were thinking way down here, which caused the sell-off. I think it's appropriate for Bank of America to sit around 30 and maybe push back up to 31, 32 back in this uh, green zone. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. But right now we are slouching around 30. So today, going into today, I had nothing on it. I had no covered call because again, the covered call I had for this week, I closed early. So I had the shares were naked and I wanted to try to open a call for next week today. That way I can get that added time value by opening it before the weekend. But unfortunately, the, the call strikes at 3050 way up here. And of course, 31 up here, they weren't paying enough. It's just the, the VIX is low. So naturally, premiums aren't that great. And uh, this cheap stock, you know, Bank of America being as cheap as it is and not really as volatile, 
the premiums were not paying enough, even at the 30-50 strike. We're talking like 70 cents away, 60 cents away, and it's not paying enough premium for me. Because I do look for 30% annualized return on my cost, which meant I would have had to sell the put the call for like 20 cents per contract, and it was only paying 15. So the 30-50 strike was not not in my uh, wheelhouse, and the 31 was obviously a lot cheaper too. So I ended up selling the 30 strike, which is right at my cost basis. So if I get assigned at 30, I actually wouldn't be making any money on the shares. It would all be from option premium, which would still be okay. It'd be a $170 winner, but you would just hope to make that extra share appreciation too. But at the end of the day, I have an opportunity to sell calls as my position is in profit territory. I should do it and see what happens. So I sold two calls today at the 30 strike for 32 cents for next week. And um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, we're right there, but who knows if this goes sideways and dips a little bit more, then that call, those calls will obviously expire worthless, but I'll be able to reduce my break even by a healthy 32 cents. So that would be a really nice cost basis reduction. But I'm kind of hoping I just get out of this thing. Uh, I would not be too mad about that because overall with the account and my positions, like I said, we've been plateauing. We haven't really been making much progress. It's been feeling like all my positions have been losers as I sit here and wait for things to happen. So it would be nice to unload a position, free up buying power and make a profit in the process. So that would be nice. We'll see what happens there. So that's on the table. We'll go to Chewy now. So I have a couple of things going on with Chewy. I, I'm already in a hundred shares of it. I have a hundred shares at an average cost of 35.24. That's the blue line here. Um, I sold a covered call this week against my shares. And I also sold two cash secured puts, you know, cause I, I would like to, it's a cheap stock. I have the buying power left to add more to the position. You know, at this price, I could take up to two, 300 shares. I only have 100. So I sold some more puts to build a, better, a bigger position. I sold them at the 33 strike. And this week we dipped. So this right here was the start of Monday. I sold a covered call at 36. And then I sold puts at 33 with the yellow, where the yellow line is. We sold off hard, which decayed my call. And I was able to close the call for 90% profit, that which ended up being a 30, I'm sorry, a 28 cent capture on the covered call. So it lowered my break even by 28 cents. So that's done with. But my puts, on the other hand, were in jeopardy. They went in the money because we sold off so hard. It was again, the 33 strike was what I sold and we dipped all the way down to 32. So we opened up here, sold off for three straight days down to 3180. Popped back up to 33, couldn't hold it, went back down to 32 on Thursday, and right here is when I decided to roll it on, on Thursday afternoon when we dipped back down to 32. I don't like to roll my positions until at least Thursday because I want to give the stock a chance to come back up, and I also want Theta to do its job and decay the option, get rid of some of that time value so I can buy it back at a cheaper price. And midday on Thursday, it wasn't looking good. I tried to give it a chance. You know, closing at 33 on Wednesday was promising, but for Thursday to come and for us to sell right back off to 32, it wasn't looking good. I decided to roll it then and there. So I bought back my cash secured puts that week on Thursday, and then I sold the same strike, the same 33 strike, but for next week, expiring April 28th. And I got a net credit to do that. I think I got a net 29 cents on that roll. So that put my net position at... 62 cents per contract. So my net position is two cash secured puts sold at the 33 strike for 62 cents per contract. That's my position right now. And that expires next Friday. If they expire worthless next Friday, that's going to be a, a $124 winner on, on that premium there. So that'd be cool. You can see we already pushed back up back towards 33 right here. So I ended up rolling at a really good time because it was right down here when I rolled and we pushed right back up to 33. In hindsight, I probably could have just taken assignment since the stock did recover, but obviously we don't know what's going to happen. We can only play or position ourselves to what could happen. I went with the roll, which I'm okay with. I got a really good credit for it, so I can't regret it uh, in that sense. And so we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. If Chewy does, does rally a bit, then these puts will expire worthless or I'll close them early for a really nice profit. That'll be cool. But if I do get assigned... I'm at least getting a nice credit to uh, to lower that cost basis on those shares that I get assigned. So, you know, we'll see. It definitely is 
struggling at the moment, but we are in a demand zone and the 32 level is holding up. We tested it a couple times and we keep pushing back up the 33. But 33 is acting as resistance. It's been rejected a couple times already. If we zoom out on the weekly chart, you can see how this area would be support. I mean, we've dipped down to this zone several times over the past like nine months and we keep popping out of it. So that's why I wanted to play in this area. So far, so good with holding up at this range, in this range, but I would like to see a now, I would now like to see a push out of it. Lastly, we have CVS. Yuck. This thing just can't get out of it, can't get out of its own way. We went all the way back down to these lows right here, this recent pivot low near 72. We didn't quite get as low, uh, but we did, we are in the range and hell, we still could sell off more and test it. We have, we just haven't gotten there yet. So this, this recent rally here was fun while it lasted up to $78. Now we're back down to 72.80. So that's not fun. My cost basis is up here at 82.66. Nothing I can do. However, there was something that happened this week with CVS and that was a dividend. You can see here, it actually paid a dividend this week on Thursday, X dividend date, 60 cents. Per share. So I'm going to collect $60. I don't know. Looks like, so trend trading view is saying the payment date is May 1st. So May 1st, I should get 60 bucks in dividends. So that'll reduce my cost basis by 60 cents. That's how I'm going to look at it. That's the cool thing about playing names that pay dividends is that if you are in a situation like this, where you have to hold on to it for a while, you get paid to do it with through dividends. If you can't sell covered calls, well, at least you'll collect a dividend every now and then. So that's great. Um, at least it's something, you know, but yeah, this is just a rough position. Now, what I'm looking to see here, now that we're coming back down to test this low at 72, I would like to see it hold again and we pop back up. If that does happen, if I'm, if we're seeing some nice sideways support in this range, then I would like to sell another put in this range near 72, 73, because this looks like a new area of support. That's we're kind of bottoming out here. If I were to get assigned, let's say at 73, like right down here, my cost basis would be lowered to about 78.50, 78 or so. And that's a price that we did hit somewhat recently. So I think that would better position myself given the most recent price action. And I think that would be my best interest. If it does sell off though, further than this, then that'll, that'll suck. I mean, I do have... I did mark a red line initially of where I would look to add to the position. That'd be if the stock declined 30% down to $60 per share. But again, if it proves to me that this is going to be the new low, the new support level, then it'll probably be my best interest to just buy shares here because if it does make a little bit of another push, I might be able to squeeze out of this position with a newly adjusted cost basis from averaging down. Prayers in the chat for CVS. So that'll do it for today's weekly recap. Again, the account is kind of stagnant right now as we're dealing with the same positions that we've been dealing with the past few weeks. Bank of America is looking promising though. I might be able to get out of that this week for a profit. So that'll be a nice addition to the P&L for the month of April. And it would also free up buying power and allowing me to maybe start selling another put at CVS or going to another position, whatever. Because Bank of America with 200 shares that's tying up about $6,000 in buying power. So if that were to leave, I'd, I'd be able to uh, to do some other things. So that'd be exciting. Chewy is interesting too. Although I'm not, you know, in profit territory, I do have cash secured puts sold, which is providing a potential for more realized gains if those were to expire worthless. So that's something I'm looking out for too. And of course, we already know about CVS. So that's it, guys. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and I will see you all next time.